don't have my uh, son's name is Uzu. You know that? Yeah. <laughs> Uzu. I mean, son's name is Uzu. He is uh, 10 years old. This is a painting he did. <laughs> <laughs> he's very fond of Ganpati. So he studies in uh, DPS. But he doesn't know yet that uh, uh, Ozu is a filmmaker. So he's very, he's, his name has become very popular. <laughs> One day, I chanced upon an advertisement in a paper calling for applications to the Film and Television Institute. At that time, it was Film Institute of India. What really attracted me in that advertisement was that they were offering a course called Screenplay Writing. The institute had just started in 61. This was year 62. When I went there, I knew it was originally the home of Prabhat Topi. There was a lot of criticism in starting a film institute in Pune, which is cut off from Bombay, the hub of cinema activity. In fact, that really became the boon, because there was no direct influence of the Bombay commercial cinema in Pune. See, although Bombay cinema is known as the hub of commercial activity, the technicians and the artists are outstanding. So this is very interesting. You know, they are wonderful actors, wonderful artists, and wonderful technicians. But they looked upon cinema as a, as a mere commercial activity. You know, this was the sad part. Even today this is true. You know, there is such great acting talents in Bombay, and then you hardly see, you cannot take one film out and say this is an example of his great performance. You know, there is no good film to back up the artist or even the technician. 
but uh, in the regional films it is different you know there you see a director there you see the technician there is also an uncompromising attitude to filmmaking this is what makes the regional films the so called regional films they are, they are like any other like indie cinema the best of indie cinema should be a regional film because it has to have its roots it has to have genuine uh, people and problems so in that sense film institute really uh, cut off uh, became the real uh, you know what do you call the, uh, the agent provocator for a different kind of cinema My life at FTII was totally clueless. <coughs> Apart from this idea that I liked Bresson and I was deeply influenced by Rithik Ghatak, I admired Godard, I even liked Fellini. But generally, the three years at the institute were totally clueless. I was more or less drifting. I was not organized in any way. I was just exploring. So all the work I did at FTI was also of very little consequence to me. The time that you spent, you know, three years at the institute, and the time where you were able to grow, you know, very slowly, sitting around under a tree, or going out for walks, you know, sometimes going out, taking a train to Lanavala and coming back, you know, early in the morning and sleeping, and not getting classes, you know. That's the growth, you know, that's the, that's the wonderful thing about the Institute. And I know that over the years, many attempts have been made to streamline that place, to actually organize that place, you know. And there has been no success because there's a great resistance, you know, that seems to be inherited by every new batch, you know, that comes to the institute for some reason. <laughs> I think it all began with Ritri mm -hmm. You cannot disassociate FTI from him. I think the legacy of Ritri Khattar just lives on. And my memory of that legacy, of course, is that he's sitting in his vice principal's office and he opens the door takes out a file, he opens the other drawer, takes out a bottle <laughs> of alcohol and then he puts it and if somebody is visiting then the bottle goes inside the drawer and the file is on the table. Well, it was uh, his presence uh, changed the whole thing I think, you know, and set a kind of very reflective environment, you know, made for a very reflective environment. I think it was a kind of a mythical place. You must also remember that FTII started becoming noticed because you had some filmmakers who had emerged from there who were trying to set a course of a new kind, of another kind. People like Adur and Mani and Kumar, K.K. Mahajan as a cinematographer. And they took on tones and you really felt this is a place you can go to and experiment with yourself and the medium. If you see our class, it is quite an incredible class because there are such disparate elements. There's Kundan Shah, there's a, 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 who wanted to make a certain kind of cinema. Ashok Ahuja was an incredibly reclusive guy. And uh, uh, 
Vidhu Vinod Chopra, Hari Haran, myself, you know, uh, Shubhankar Ghosh, diverse to the extent of all kinds of individual minds. But I think what we did to spend a lot of time talking about films, and we should have made a kind of debates and almost battles, you know, of, uh, the kind of cinema that he wanted to pursue. But in the process of those debates and those battles, I think something else also was generated, a kind of a, 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 an energy. And it wasn't that the cinemas, you didn't, you, you, you stopped talking about cinema after you seen it in the, in the main theatre. The discussions continued in, in, in the rooms and went up to 3 o'clock, 4 o'clock in the morning. And not just cinema, then you went into poetry and politics and painting and music. And There was Satish Bahadur, who I think played a very important role in introducing us to a, the world of cinema. You know, it was. Uh, uh, but more than the individual teachers or people from outside who kept coming in, I think what really helped us is when we saw films from around the world and you groped and you floundered and you tried to understand. And at times you think you got half an answer, at times you got no answer at all. But in that whole journey of it, that was so critical. That was important. You don't necessarily have to get the answers. Hari peti me ma ke paise kagas ke niche teh kiye chipi hai. Pita kali almari ke samne khadi hai. Bhai deer raat kuhe me jhaat raha hai. Wah matke ke paas wah gilas dhoonta hai. Jo se kabhi nahi milta hai. पिता खेत में लाल टमाटर देखकर खुश होते हैं उनके पीछे घिसटता चलता है एक मालिन मालिन खेत के कोने में बच्चे को काली मिट्टी पर सुला रही है नींद में चलती माँ कुएं के पास पहुँचती है वे एक दूसरे को पहचान नहीं पाते कुएं में वो अंधेरे प्रेत पानी भरते हैं प्रभात वॉज ए फंक्शनिंग स्टूडियो इट हैड वर्क फॉर क्वाइट सम It was essentially a functioning studio which had all the facilities required for filmmaking. The forest in front of the boys hostel is an artificial forest. If you look at the entire area around, there aren't any trees, especially if you look at the hill behind, it's bare. That was the kind of ground on which the institute was built. But the guys who built the place felt we will eventually need a jungle kind of place to shoot those banyan trees which are there were planted they have grown so huge now you cannot imagine that place without those trees there were people left over from puravat still there they were very high up and there were none in the teaching staff but there were guys who knew their business There were people who had worked up to assistant cameraman level. There were people who had sort of been assistant editors, light boys, electricians, some lab technicians who were very good. All of them were there, and they were tremendous asset to the place. And they taught us. If they didn't directly teach us, they taught us by example, because they had a very strong work ethic. which i don't think you really find out nani burburati hai mujhe kabhi class nahi milta aur gala daba kar cheekhta hai maa jahan ki tahan khadi reh jati hai aangan ka har singar safed phoolon se Kumar Gandhar had come to the institute to sing for my film. It was the month of December, a Sunday morning. And we had the old sound theater in which we were going to record him. My sound recordist was Hitu Ghosh. And 
Kumaran, there were came to this auditorium and I said, oh, what a place, you know, we didn't have any Tanpura tuned or anything like that. And he just, you know, just sang an alap and he said, oh, it's so wonderful to be here. So, you know, it's just a place of good vibrations, you know. It's, I mean, when somebody like Kumar comes to the institute, he feels like singing, you know, that's, and I think that's a great achievement for a place, you know. It's not because that uh, alap is in your syllabus that he is singing it or something as idiotic as that. So when you have such a place and if you are sensitive because you have not taste or because just because you are a sensitive person, you pick up the vibes of the place. And that place has some tremendous vibes. When you are studying the My first project in the institute was one of the still photography sessions where I chose the subject, form and texture, and I scouted the entire campus, the entire jungle, to choose 25 pictures. The texture of the trees and the form it created. It was amazing. I found embryos, I found you know, mother, you know, forms that, you know, a mother holding a baby. So I spotted, you know, I, I knew each and every tree in the institute. Then I realized, uh, you know, this, in later in, in, the, in the studies in the institute, I realized Ghataka said, you know, you have to find your tree, one tree in your life, you know. You better you find in the institute, you know. And there was an old tree trunk in the institute which was, was very attached to the tree. And it was one of the characters in my continuity film. And in my third year, one day I, I found the tree is not there. You know, somebody on director's instruction, somebody felt the tree. I was so furious. I was so angry. I was so desperate. So I ran to director's bungalow, made a ruckus there and made them to put it back. And when they put it back, they put it ulta, you know. The branch was like this, you know, coming towards the road. When they put it, they put the branch the other way around. I thought, anyway, at least they put it back. So. No, I can't find the tree there now. It's gone. I don't know from where to where I went up. Sorry, boss. Absolutely. Where are we? We're talking about your dialogues. Yeah, so we all switched roles and, uh, you know, it, it, we, we, I, I thought uh, we learned a lot. I learned a lot. Switched role as in? Yeah, yeah. In one film I would be the ca uh, cameraman, in the other film I would be the sound recorders, in the other film I would be the actor. Uh, Forty films we made. In one film I would be the director, and in uh, one film I would be pushing the trolley, laying the tracks, and, and so on and so forth. You know, so it was a very complete experience for me, in a certain sense. If I have to see what was FTII for me like, I can definitely say that I fell in love with myself, my adult self, and I became slightly delusional about my own abilities. And I got very, very hooked and addicted to the formal craft of filmmaking. And I think this is a very important aspect of doing what you do. Hello. Yeah. Yeah, Chudni. The changes, I'll come and do it myself. Uh, what am I going? Mm -hmm. Where in Ardash? Anyway, I'll go there uh, uh, to work for that. I just don't know, I'm thinking we should not have a screening tomorrow. There's no point because the sink, the out sink portion will be out sink. You know? So, what is the big thing about showing a bad uh, film to everybody? I mean, we have no option, we have to send it to Khan, so we'll send it to Khan, the second thing. But uh, we can wait till we correct this problem. Simple.
was not corrected. I think when I walked in uh, first time for uh, interview or whatever, I remember Rahat Yusufi uh, was there, Rajan Khosa and Piyush were there talking to him. A nice looking, very hip, very cool guys with beards and uh, torn jeans and, and they were discussing intensely about some film, mm. about their dialogue exercise or something. And I thought, wow, just to be in this place will be heaven. To be just talking films. Can you imagine talking cinema all the time? I would say before going to FTI, one had an idea about cinema. Everyone does. Okay, films should be like this. Films should be like this, this like. or like that. Or this is what I and like. And in the first six months in FTI, those ideas get more uh, body. You start really believing fervently that this is it. And nothing else matters. And then you make your first exercise continuity film and then you realize shit you don't know a thing you know it's like a big slap that everybody receives uh, it's a great slap but i remember chhabriya sahab with great fondness uh, of course kumar and mani used to come as guest lecturers i think that uh, I was quite scared of uh, how much Kumar knows, for example. You know, it used to be a big pressure, you know. My God, how much he knows? That, you have to know all that much to be a filmmaker, you know, that kind of a pressure. And it was quite daunting, actually. Uh, but one learnt, I think, slowly to not be daunted. It takes years. During that time, Mani and Kumar used to come to FTII. They were young men. Mani was about 28 years old, Kumar couple of years older. Mani had made uski roti. He had made ashar ka ek din. He was trying to make duvida. Duvida gave a lot of dreams to a lot of people. Because some guy with 75 rupees, reversal film, Akbar Padamsi's hand-cracked camera, makes a film. So it opened people's minds. Because there is a possibility of making films like that. It's the same time when Fassbinder and Herzog are making their films. And they are also making low-budget films. So their budgets, feeling, style are similar because of the limitation of the equipment. Now that time what ha what's happening that Germans and the French, they are flooding FTI with the, their films, their export films, you know, like, and their cultural icons, you know, like uh, Feisbinder and uh, this, uh, Herzog, France is flooding FTI with Bresson, Alan René, Clauseau, Truffaut, because if they don't give you the, those films, you won't have any impression. The story would be something else, you know, you know, you know. Or there could have been something else, you know. At the same time, Nair Saab is pirating, you know, you know. He's making his own prints. So the day and night he's watching his films, you know, you know. And we all watching them, at least we're watching the films, you know, pretty and uh, it's an escape but the leaving impression you know because we have all our back memories of the town and year where we escaping from we have put them into you know some back log you know, you know but these and we have a new space or a new disc you know where we putting these impressions from german france and we going to czechoslovakia we going to poland and you watching we are not in india you know, you know. It's a different space. 
Now today, let's say, Leela Bansali is making a film uh, called uh, Savariya. Now, it's based on Dostoevsky's story, White Nights. The White Nights is made by Visconti, it's made by Bresson. Everybody wanted to make White Nights. You know. Money wanted to make White Nights. Anup wanted to make White Nights. I wanted. So the dream has been, the seed has been sown in 74, you know. Now it materializes in uh, Leela Bansali, you know, with uh, stars. So it means that the Leela Bansali's Soyangmara won't happen if the seed is not sown by these guys, you know. I am a great believer in training and particularly when it is an art form and a skill. I think it's all very well to have talent but unless it can be honed you don't really do justice to the talent. I had a fabulous guru in Roshan Paneja. Much of what I've learned in acting, I've learned from him. And even today, there are discoveries that I keep making in acting, which I realize today that, oh, that's what Tanija Sahib meant when he said that particular thing. So it keeps coming back to me. It was of extreme value. But in my view, um, it was not just the acting course uh, that was responsible uh, for what I am today, but it was a shaping of my personality. I'm often asked, how acting can be taught and why should one go to the institute and one is always asked that uh, look at Amitabh Bachchan, look at Dilip Kumar, they never went, they didn't have any kind of training and yet they're very fine actors and I accept, I accept that but then their training happened on the job. It's not that they didn't get trained, they got trained in a different way, they got trained on the job but what training does is it polishes you, you're like a raw diamond and what training does is teaches you how to use your reserves in a way that they can spring to your um, side when you need them. To teach you techniques by which you can create for yourselves all the tools that are necessary to be able to communicate the emotion that you want it to. If the technique is showing, then you haven't got it wrong then the way you are doing it is to be blamed. You know, lots of people say, oh, but that's a very technical actor. If by that they mean that it's a mechanical acting, then the technique is wrong. But then you can't blame the technique. You have to get the technique right. You have to because it's a simulation of reality. When we say act, acting is reacting. When we are saying the spontaneity in acting is... Uh, simulated it can't really be spontaneous because i mean i am rehearsing i'm not speaking the lines i'm giving the impression of speaking them for the first time but it is after i've gone through rehearsals my technique helps me to create inside me jisko kehte na ki mitti geeli kar lo aap apni mitti geeli kar lo to usme ankur phutega what training does is it shows an actor how to keep that mitti geeli Those were the days when there was this whole controversy between Satyajit Ray and Mani Call's films and Kumar Shahani's films and Bikram Singh, editor of Filmfare. Those things were really hot those days. I'm talking about the late 60s and 70s. One was aware that there is a possibility of a different kind of cinema than that one saw and what one lived with and appreciated. So one was aware of FTII's contribution or FTII's potential. We had a very strong Marxist group, Said Mirza, and, uh, and they thought dialectical materialism is very, very important to learn, to make good films, which we rejected. We said, it's not like, how can you have to be, you don't have to be a Marxist to make a good film. So there were, there were definitely two camps. One was a Marxist, one was a non-Marxist. 
and there were others who had their own, like you know, Chopra and others who had their own uh, way of operating. But I, I learned what to do, do through FTI. Outside, I might have gone into film industry, assist, because I never had, I wanted to do something personally, that's it. I didn't, I never wanted to make films. I wanted to do something. So if I had gone into the film line, because the film industry that time was ruled by Manmohan Desai, and I tried to get an assistant job and I was the 17th assistant and you don't get paid and you know, and uh, I don't know what kind of filmmaking notion I would have found. You see, I would have never learned that what is films other than until if you are in the industry it becomes a it's like a frog in a well you know you think this is this is all filmmaking is about till you make a leap and see oh my god the world outside is much more beautiful mm -hmm. The institute did have an image at that time of serious cinema. There were very few people who, especially in the field of direction, who had come out and made a mark in the Hindi film industry. The person I used to look up to was Vinod Chopra, because he had made Khamosh. I liked thrillers. He was making Parinda at that time. Our batch, in fact, was a very uh, mixed batch. I mean, there were people completely uh, serious-minded. There were people like me and Raju who loved Hindi films and we used to go on Fridays and actually watch uh, the latest releases. And uh, I feel uh, a lot of uh, learning actually happens purely by the by being in the place. You know, watching films, discussing films, making films, making mistakes, and kind of criticizing each other and all those things. Right? It's a complete package. So it's not just about the academic what you learn there. It is a whole, uh, you're kind of, uh, as the cliche goes, living and breathing cinema. So, I am sure if I had not gone to the institute, uh, I would have uh, finally ended up making films. But uh, I guess they would not be the kind of films I feel like doing today. Or uh, I don't know exactly, I can't really describe because I have not made so many films. But uh, I feel I would have been much more uh, run of the mill, you know. I mean, at that point, seriously, it was very Bombay centric. It was Hindi film centric. The aim of most people was to make it in Bombay and do Bombay stuff. For me, Bombay is crass. I hate Bollywood. I've always hated Bollywood. From when I was this high, I've hated Bollywood. I still hate Bollywood. I don't watch Hindi films. I watch one in five years, it gives me a headache. Mind you, when, when I went to the institute, it was it was a jungle. It was like I felt I was in some jungly place. I'm from Calcutta. I'm a bhadro, cultured <laughs> in quotes, bong. When there it blew my mind there. I mean, I grew up on Ghatak and Ray, and I went there, and then you know we were being dragged, and we were being made to you know sing and dance Hindi film. This, I mean it's okay looking back it's funny but at that point it was a culture shock for me you know because we we were grown in film society grown up in film societies and you know we used to think of Truffaut, Bagman, Rene all this ye sab baat karte thi. Ja ke, suddenly it was Bollywood Bombay 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 the the everything was everything was centered around Bombay and Hindi films and Hindi songs and you know music and I was, I felt quite culture shock for a while. I was like, kaha pounch gaya, like, kaha gaya, like, you know, what the fuck am I, what the fuck am I doing here? Then you get used to it and it's okay. And then, but FTI also changed, I think.
So I think the problem with FTI teaching is that they're not practitioners anymore. So they're not, they can't really concretely talk about image making because they haven't done it for a long time or they haven't ever done it. So it's, you're talking in a vacuum, you're talking in a, on a very, uh, you know, theoretical kind of, uh, not from having hands-on, you know, working. I think one has to very fast lose the shackles of film school. The sooner you lose the shackles of film school, I think you benefit from being more open and more uh, relaxed and more... Uh, um, I think it, it helps your filming because uh, I realized that, you know, uh, the tension and the rigid, rigidity that comes from uh, having fixed notions and having fixed ideas saying ki you know handle nahi karunga won't go dark won't shoot at night without so much light you know i think you get free if you if you lose these things quite early and become more bold and daring i think it, everything becomes richer you know life the way you shoot everything your approach becomes richer In fact, I would say, I mean, uh, whatever happened at the institute, I mean, uh, uh, the, the, the diploma film and the short exercises, I always felt extremely thrilled by them. Uh, because uh, since all of these films, these work, I'd say, they had very little inhibition in them. They were very carefree kind of filmmaking, so which gave uh, rise to a lot of interesting ideas. May not be the, in the whole film, but maybe a certain spark somewhere, which you don't definitely find uh, when one starts making films and earning money. When these things come together, you don't see those sparks happening. And it becomes very rare. Uh, a lot of us attempted to be a lot of different filmmakers. Some wanted to be Bergman's. Never said it, but somehow you could see some uh, attempt at some kind of compositions of Bergman or lighting or the cameraman doing something which was close to say Raul Kutar or say Daria Skonji or whatever. So we had a lot of these influences coming on our work and they were very interesting and we, uh, for us editing students we would kind of whisper in uh, some uh, in our colleagues here you know I tried a Frank Capra cut or a Kurosawa something or a Raghedio uh, Masterni uh, kind of something. So very childish things but very youthful things but and also very I would say we could soak in a lot of things. Uh, but now when we work on it, definitely those things happen in subconscious. We never talk about it. But I miss that enthusiasm. So all these things uh, really gave us a certain kind of, uh, I would say, confused direction. And I think after passing out, we took a little bit of time to kind of get adjusted to the very straight jacketed, slotted ways of working. It's a sad way, but we got to get used to it. Yeah. I'd say that life in the 70s and 80s was a little less complicated. We didn't have very fixed ambitions in our minds. On the very first day, I didn't think I've got to make a film. The making of the film was secondary. What was more important was to learn something and then formulate what one had to say. Most of us took lots of time. We were accused of dilly-dallying, procrastination and all. But that was because of the confusion in our minds. 
and it was Yancho and Godar who had created these confusions. Now that I find that people are more focused, people have fixed ambitions, people want to get the maximum out. This is a good thing and a bad thing. Because cinema is quite different from any other discipline. It's like vapor, you know. You can't catch it. You try to catch it, it will go away. Once I left the FTI again, I had the opportunity to go back there as a teacher, teaching. And I could sense the changes, perhaps the kind of openness that existed when we were students. The kind of free-for-all atmosphere changed. It became more disciplined somehow. You know, we could never imagine going to the classes with, you know, exercise books and taking down notes. It was not like that. But now it is more like that. I'm not saying that you don't need exercise books or anything like that. I'm not making a clarion call for revolution. But there was a kind of an atmosphere. John Abraham, the great filmmaker, comes into our class and starts humming a tune. He says, da, 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 da. So like my, you know, Besura voice, his voice also, I couldn't make out what it was. And he said, what is this? What am I singing? We couldn't. This is a Beethoven, Symphony of Joy, Ninth Symphony. Don't you know? You know, things like that. You know, and somebody else says, Oh, John, there's somebody waiting for you, Mr. Setu Madhavan has come, and gently takes him out of the class. But then the interaction with John later, much like the interactions which Mani and Kumar must have had with Ritwik Ghatak, whom we didn't have a chance of meeting because he died in 1976.
For me, cinema is a force which unites people. I take it like a unifying factor. In the world where everything, all ideologies, all societies, everything is trying to divide people. But the only force which unites people today is cinema. Once I had a big quarrel with my wife because I told her that cinema theatres are more spiritual than churches or temples. She couldn't take it. I feel so. Most of my enlightening moments I had in cinema theatres. Any good art has to give the process in which the being is, in a certain sense, pushed into seeing things clearly, thereby understanding things clearly, and thereby become better. Uh, you know, recently there was a question, why film schools? Why, he, you know, anybody can learn this outside also. But I told them that here is a space where your convictions will be questioned fearlessly you know, by your uh, you know, uh, fellow travelers. In, in a long search, you will not ever be questioned. So that is a um, drawback. No, to improve upon your own ideas and your own belief systems, you, know, you need opposition. So this you will get only in a school. That way, I was intellectually challenged, the maximum in my film school days. You know. And believe me, I felt more connected uh, to the outside world when I was in the institute than I am now. I don't know how it happened because I was, we were seeing two films every day, so the, you know, uh, the, 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 the Paris street corner or a Iranian street was a neighborhood, you know, it was so close. When you come out of the film school, it, you know, you feel it is distant. In our time, we were very restricted to the institute. We were very closed in. We hardly knew what was going on in Pune. I never learned Marathi in the three years there. Actually, much more in retrospect. I was quite young. We were just out of college, so there was a lot of discontent with the course. You are discontented with a whole lot of things while you're going through it. But now, in retrospect, I think I discovered, uh, one of course I understood about cinema, I discovered the responsibility of learning, that there's nobody to teach you. And this is the important thing I think about cinema is that so much is of it you just have to keep learning. You have to learn yourself. Nobody can teach you cinema like. And I think that was what was the most impressive thing for me about the Institute. It's also, also a negative point, if you know what I mean, that there's very little guidance. There was very little guidance at that time. But it is also a positive point because it gave you so much opportunity to learn on your own, to make your own mistakes, to... The unfortunate thing is that I find that the same problems that existed in our time still exist. The whole point of, I think, mentoring, which is not there at all, that there's nobody who knows your work, there's nobody who sees you, three, see you, sees you through three years. I feel those are important things, that when you join the institute, you know somebody or somebody knows your work, and sees how you develop and helps you in this process of developing so that when you're out, when you're leaving and you're making your diploma film, there is some uh, sense of a relationship with somebody creatively who helps you to. Which is why I always have said this whole thing of a mentor. You know, you have somebody who will be with you, who will talk to you. Who will. It's not, it's not a personal mentor, it's a creative mentor, basically.
let's put it this way that we really got along very well with our teachers but i think it was very clear from the start that the teachers have had better times at ftii but i don't think it was so much of a problem because i found the teachers were willing to let us do things on our own i never felt blocked by any teacher our teachers were also quite aware of their own limitations and we were all together in it making the best of it they responded very well when we tried to do things a little differently what i really value and are my best memories are of working on shootings with my seniors i assisted the third years when i was in my first year i assisted on two diploma films there was one shoot where we went out of pune just the experience of being with other people I don't know whether I'm using any of that learning right now. You evolved. You grew beyond that. But that was a place which gave me a confidence and an idea about how to look at things. That is more important. Of course, it taught me what is a multi and what is a baby and how to cut a light and what is a diffusion and all. It taught me a lot of things like that. I don't even remember what I talked about then. But that made me into what I am now. If I'm lighting up a scene now, all that must be helping me to light up a scene now or how to treat a scene now. And an entire network of people outside, you know, it's a family. You you bump into each other and it's an entirely uh, such a warming warm experience to talk to people about like the same language you asked me earlier uh, relationship with uh, raju it is a language which works much more than anything else i would say raju and me would <coughs> many a times it has happened he like i about to say something and he would tell me something and the same thing we talk exactly the same thing and it, it happens with me with sridhar mods with the same way it's about a common platform which you're sharing it's a same language which you're talking about which clarifies a lot of things which makes filmmaking lot more fun one lived uh, without any money in your pocket for months in that place you had no money actually you know you're completely broke you somehow would get around 4 rupees to go and get a pack of sandra from the adda outside that you managed some over by the day evening that was the life basically you sit and drink with your professor in an adda and get drunk and tell him to pay and you know come out you run out of you don't have cigarettes run out of cigarettes you forget you don't have so you take one from your professor and you know smoke with them in the classroom the story is long story which i don't want to talk about It's not that don't want to may not work for you We used to have parties, you know, every every uh, Saturday. In fact, every occasion we, uh, you know, can get uh, every Saturday. Of course, we used to have party on the terrace. We used to have, you know, all these uh, mixed uh, 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 say drinks, and the most uh, popular was double gora. 
डबल घोड़ा इधर लोकल लिख आई डोंट नो वेदर आई एन नाउ इट इज स्टूडेंट्स दे हैव इट ऑन नॉट इट्स ओनली वन बॉटल इज ओनली ट्वेंटी फाइव पैसा दैट टाइम ट्वेंटी फाइव पैसा एंड सो वी यूज टू हैव दिस डबल घोड़ा and the bucket wise i mean the, we don't go by you know bottles <laughs> bucket <laughs> so we have to finish off uh, <coughs> two buckets uh, this evening that's it so that's our mission so every uh, saturday we used to have that kind of mission so one day i uh, got very angry that time you know in third year i was and uh, uh, the party was not going well and uh, we had to finish about three buckets that evening and uh, <coughs> it was already 1:00 uh, o'clock in the morning and then uh, i mean not even uh, half a bucket had gone they were on i mean something and uh, discussing a uh, very boring things so i got very wild so i threw that those all the you know two and a half buckets from the terrace so um, <laughs> then i i i called off the party said uh, no <coughs> and uh, that's the incident after that everyone used to you know tease me on that bucket i mean uh, daru kyu feka <laughs> so they used to call me daru kyu feka every time you days to tease me so in the class also in the everywhere and uh, i used to feel very embarrassed about it so and then i feel very bad also throwing throwing up those at when a half buckets from the terrace so those incidents you know yes, i mean the good memories and there are many of course and there are many